Give you greetings on this morning, May 17th. We welcome you into the worship together as a congregation as we give praise and honor to our Lord and God. There are certain announcements I wish to make. We've had daily bread and upper room are available and if you wish you can come in they're right inside the door in the vestibule on the table. If you can't make it in, call into the office and we will mail you whatever you request. We know that if you are used to using these items, it's important that you continue to have them available for your use and your continuing study of the Bible and the scripture. Uh, the, there are mass outside the main door in a tote uh, they have been donated. If you need a mask, just cut, drop by the church, take one out, and that's all you need to do. They're free, and uh, they were made by a member of the congregation for our usage. We are continuing, <coughs> excuse me, we are continuing membership classes on Sunday at 9.30. If you wish just to sit in to observe, please please be, uh, contact Pastor Duane and he will send you the information. We are also looking to continue Bible study on Sunday morning and we would like to uh, find out how many people would be interested in doing that. It would be during the regular Sunday school hour and if you are interested, would you please contact the office so that we can find out whether it's feasible and whether there is a desire or a need to do this. If you have any praises or concerns, especially prayers of concern, please contact the office and we will put them out on the prayer chain and the email chain. As we enter into worship, our desire is to bring Christ's light into the world, symbolized by lighting of the candles. Our scripture reading for this morning is from, uh, from 1 Peter 
chapter 3, verses 13 to 22, if you'd like to pause the video and open your Bible to join along. I'm reading out of the New Revised Standard Version, 1 Peter, chapter 3, verses 13 to 22. Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. And do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteousness for the unrighteous, in order to bring, bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. God bless the reading of his word, and we look forward to Pastor Barb bringing our message. Thank you, Pastor Dwayne. How many times when you're growing up do you remember your parents telling you, now you be good, you be good. How many times have you used that phrase around your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, friends? You be good, be good. What does, why do you have to be good? Well, if you're not good, you're bad. And sooner or later, that bad catches up with you, and people start asking questions. And then it comes down to a matter of conscience. Is your conscience clean? Have you been bad or good? It reflects on your conscience. And your conscience can, it can bother you. If you know you have done something that is not good, you know it, your conscience bothers you. Peter is writing a letter to the church. He's writing to the early Christians who are tr struggling to figure out, how am I a Christian? How do I live my life so that I am a Christian, a follower of the one called Christ? He starts out about who can harm you if you do good? And then he realizes, well, yeah, you can get hurt doing good. Uh, I remember that sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Yeah, they sometimes do, and people can be bullies, and they can, they can hurt you. They can make fun of you. They can challenge you. And that is what this scripture, the beginning of it, is all about. It says, do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. Sanctify the Lord in your heart sanctify. I had to look up sanctify because I thought I knew what it meant, but I thought I better make sure I know what it means. Sanctify means to place in respect and honor and center. So what it's calling for you to do is to center your life on the Lord. Centering your life on the Lord means this is what I am going to work at. 
this is where my interest is, 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 <laughs> too many is's. This is where my interest is. This is where I'm going to put uh, all my energy and I, all my uh, focus. It's like having the northern star in our northern hemisphere. If you want to know how to go north, you find the north star and you center yourself on the north star and you follow it. It's the same way with following the Lord. You center your life on the Lord and you follow it. And if you do that conscientiously, consciously, consciously, your conscience is clear because you are obeying and you're following. Now, the bottom line is that in this world, a lot of people have not put God in the center of their heart. There are other things, uh, the search for money, uh, for those who are addicted to drugs or alcohol or even food. This is what they center their life on, these needs. And um, along with these worldly needs that they've focused on, they're going to find that they've got a lot of worry. They got a lot of fear. They're not sure. It's like the drug, drug addict that's always chasing the next high. And there's always the fear, will I get it? Will I get it? As a Christian, we have turned our back on that and we've centered ourselves on God. And we attempt to live our life with a clear conscience, conscience. And we do that by doing the will of God. We are good. Now, I will admit that we try to be good, but sometimes we're like sheep and we wander off and we go down a foxhole and we find ourselves mired in mud. And that's when we turn back to God and ask for forgiveness and recenter ourselves. Sometimes we stray off and then we have to remember to come back. Why is this important? The rest of the scripture talks about Jesus and the fact that he died, the righteous died for the unrighteous. Why did he do this? He did this to bring us to God. So he gave us a way to find forgiveness for those times when we lose our focus on God, go astray and sin. That's why he died, to save us. There is also that part about Noah and the ark, uh, saving uh, the eight through the water and tying it into baptism. And it's very clear there. He says, hey, you don't get baptized to take a bath. You get baptized so that you can ask the Lord for a clear conscience. If you go back to the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve in the garden, after they've eaten the fruit, the Lord is walking through the garden in the evening and they're hiding in a bush. And the Lord calls out to them, where are you? Oh, we're naked. How do you know you're naked? Did you eat of the tree that I told you not to? Nope. Their conscience was not clear because they know they'd done something wrong. And they were afraid. Fear comes with sin. We are living in a time of great fear. We are living in a time where we are masked, we are gloved, and we walk with fear. We don't know if it's safe to leave our houses. We don't know if it's safe to go to the grocery store and buy groceries. Can we bring those groceries into our house or do we wash them all before we put them in our house with disinfectant? And I'll tell you right now, it's kind of hard to find disinfectant. Sanitizers, bleach, it seems to all have disappeared. People are so concerned but if you have centered your life on the Lord, you realize you are in his hands. You realize that you use your common sense as you were taught as children. Wash your hands because this is your hands and they get dirty and you don't know what's on your hands. So wash them. 
It's the same way when you were young and they told you, look both ways before you cross the road. Do not run with scissors. Why? You can get hurt. Common sense rules. Follow them. If you follow the common sense rules and you put the fear aside and you focus on the Lord. Remember the hymn, on Christ a solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. That's the fear that surrounds us. Center your life on Christ. Accept his redemption. And know that our conscience is clear and we can come to the Lord without fear because we know that he is in control. We have free will and that's how come sometimes we go astray but we know he will welcome us back if we ask for forgiveness. And all these things in these days of trouble and turmoil and uncertainty Make sure where your heart is, center it on the Lord, and you will find that your fears aren't as great as you thought they were. Go in peace this week. Go with the knowledge that the Lord holds you in his hands, no matter what. Thank you, Pastor Barb, for pointing us towards God's word for us today. And now let us calm our hearts, calm our spirits, center ourselves coming to God in prayer. God most high, living God, Lord of the earth, we come together as we can in spirit to acknowledge you as creator and sustainer. We praise your holy name in our worship and in our prayer, and we desire to glorify you in our lives. We are excited for the spring weather, the growth and new life we see all around. Thank you, God, for life, for the cycles and design of nature that creates, reflecting your creative spirit in and through the world. And we thank you for the opportunities that we are given in life to participate in creation and recreation. Allow us, we pray, Heavenly Father, to not despair in the cycles of life that challenge our ability to enjoy your creation. Take our fear, we pray. Give us a deep sense of your abiding love in and through these difficult times so that we may always be looking up at the glory that is to come and to not be mired in focus on the mud at our feet. May our consciences be clear, we pray. Help us to embrace the necessary different and creative ways of coming together and to be able to sort through all the information being thrown at us so that we can recognize the controlling from the true. Allow us to be formed and molded into the way and path that you set before us in the life and spirit of your Son, Jesus Christ. We uplift those of our fellowship for whom life goes on, and we pray for your presence with each and every one where healing is your will. We pray, Lord, that you make your power known in them. Where it is not, we pray for the peace of spirit to accept your will and to live in the assurance of your promise for life beyond this realm and reality. We pray, Lord, for the world. There is so much need for your love, care, and compassion May the people of the world take the opportunity before them now in, in this pandemic to stop and share that love and respect of others given by you. 
be with the leaders in the world, we pray, that they might be guided by your hand and not by their own agenda. We also uplift this church, O oh God, that we might be beyond these walls, a body of Christ. Guide us as we look to return to these walls for praise, worship, and prayer, that, we'd, that we would do so respectfully and that we might offer a place for people to come and to be in your presence. Sanctify us in that task and bless this community as we endeavor to reflect your light in the world. For your glory and for Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you.